This is Assistant Professor Ishani Trivedi from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. Let us continue today uh, with the precast building systems. In the previous session, we discussed about the various structural concepts of the precast concrete building system. Today, let us talk about the precast building systems that can be achieved. We already know that you can have frame structure, you can have composite structure. So let us just categorize it in the precast building system. Uh, let us see that how many types of precast building systems can be achieved. The first one which we have is large panel system. The second which we have is frame system. Third which we have is slab column system with walls or cross wall system. The fourth which we have is a mixed system. Now out of these two we know that large panel system and the frame system is preferred according to our Indian standard course. You can also provide the slab column system along with the cross wall system and together combination will be a mixed system. Let us try to understand what these are trying to say. So, uh, First, if we talk about the large panel systems, then the name itself says it is referring to the multi-story or large construction or large buildings, right? Multi-story structures composed of large wall and floor concrete panels connected in horizontal and vertical directions. So you can see over here, I have taken an example. This is a construction of a tall structure. It will uh, go for high rise building. So how you can see the construction is defined to be a large panel system. Vertical and horizontal both elements are load bearing in this system. It is a box like structure. If you see it is a box like structure. The slabs will be either one way or two way. You can see the construction over here on moving one. Once again, this is your precast walls and the temporary bracings are provided. Although the uh, form work construction cost is going to be less overall in this system, right? When you are constructing, not uh, when you are casting the elements. Okay. Now further, you can see this. Uh, uh, as I am talking about the load bearing components will be vertical as well as horizontal both and the slabs will be either one way or two way and necessary joints and connections bolts and ties will be provided we will also discuss about the structural ties in the upcoming sessions so the second system which we have is the frame system now you are very much aware with the frame system over here you can see this is an example of a hollow core slab. Uh, as we have discussed in the previous sessions about the different types of uh, precast concrete floors, one of them was hollow core slab. So over here you can see this is an example of a hollow core slab. It is untopped meaning the topping material is not provided over here. It can be provided. The topping material will be cast in situ concrete which will be done later on. Then uh, this slab is connected with the beam and also it is resting on the slab. So this is our conventional framed system, beam column slab system in which the three elements will be precast and it will be connected with the help of the welded angle. Uh, as I said ties and connections will be provided. So this is our standard typical conventional frame system. The elements will be called the linear elements. The beams are seated on corbels of pillars which are hinged or pin joints. Corbel means a supporting beam. The, over here you can see the extended portion. The, the corbel is also provided in case of uh, windows, right? At the sill of windows. It will be connected with the help of pinned joints or hinged joints. And uh, this is how my system works. The joints will be filled with the concrete then on this side. The, of course, the joints will not be left open. It will be filled with cast and set to concrete on the side, right? Um, over the, these are my uh, supporting elements. This is my corbel that right, which I am talking about. Um, next, uh, once again, this is the live picture of how uh, the construction is done. As you can see, this is my column. These are my corbels, the corbels of the column on which my beam is supported. On top of it, can you see there is cast in situ concrete? 
Right, that is my topping material. That will be my cast in situ topping. This will be my precast slab. And uh, over here you can also see the T beams, right? So the floor can be provided either T beams or you can also provide the hollow core slab. Over here you can see the same picture, the construction over here. You can see the drawing of the same, the grouting, right? Grouting means filling up the joints. The joints will be filled up with grouts of the fresh cast in situ concrete. This is my beam 1, this is my beam 2 and the corbel plate which we are talking about and the welding support will be provided and uh, over here is the installation of the beam longitudinal bars and in on which the fresh cast in situ concrete will be filled up. Uh, let us move forward with the precast building systems. Uh, so, the precast building system if you want to define it then it is a beam column framework using the walls or the cores and recast portal frames and wall frames. Now have a look over here. The first one which we have is my main spandrel beam. The second is my hollow core unit that is my hollow core slab. The third one which we have is the internal rectangular beam. The fourth one is the outside rear one that is the gable beam. The fifth one which we have uh, is same uh, spandrel and beam. Uh, the seventh one which we have over here, the seventh is the landing support. I am talking about a full frame system over here. Mark that we are talking about a precast portal frame system. The next which we have, ninth one is the ground floor beam, ground beam. The tenth is my column. Eleven is my wall. Twelve is my double D unit. Thirteen is my internal beam. And the fourteen is the edge spandrel beam. So this full system comprises of a precast portal frame building system. These are the main components which you need to take care of and which you need to design for a precast building system. So out of these, what are the vertical elements? They are continuous but because beam and slab connections are pinned, there is no global frame action. Major connections are provided between beams and floors and they are designed to construct as the pin joints and therefore horizontal elements that is the slabs, the stairs and the beams are simply supported in seismic zones and the connection is made rigid, right? In seismic zone the connection has to be made rigid while pin or hinge joint can be provided. As we discussed already in this session, I am just summarizing the whole system in this uh, particular uh, discussion. The stiff bracing elements like the walls are designed as a story height element bracing each story in turn or as a continuous element bracing floors as tall cantilevers. These are the various concepts which you just need to go through. Next which we have is if we are discussing about the office and retail development then the distance between the beam columns will be 6 to 12 meter. For multi-story car parking where the live load will be 2.5 kilometer per meter square 16 meter for floor span and 7.2 meter for beams giving three ways for uh, between the columns parking can be done. These are just the provisions of various precast building systems you have to just go through and giving you for information. Now the wall frames are best suited for the apartments, hotels, schools and shopping units. Uh, this is the application. Over here you can see this is my skeletal frame. This is my braced skeletal frame, then we have the cross wall system, we have the spine wall, we have the facade, that is the exterior, uh, the front and the rear and we have a cell. This is the difference between various types of building systems which you can provide with the help of precast systems, right? You are very much aware with the frame system, so you must be able to understand it very clearly. Cross wall system may be a little bit uh, new for you, but uh, uh, you need to just go through all the various applications. Next third category is first is office category, second is wall frames and third is precast building of portal frame which we already discussed right. Just we have some dimensions over here that the clear spans can be 25 to 40 meter. T section or I section pre-stress beams can be provided. So uh, the precast portal frames with flat roof structures right there are two types of roof one is inclined roof 
another is flat roof so in most cases flat roof will only be provided in this precast system if it is pre stressed or reinforced beam 6 to 8 meter span will be provided uh, you don't need to go through a detailed design of all these things but you just need to remember the um, dimensions right so here you can see this is also an example of a pitch roof you can also provide the same the design will be much more complex in these cases uh, as i have said that precast building system is huge it's vast system various types of combinations can be provided so overall this makes uh, the three types of precast building system one is the office and retail structures second is the uh, wall frame structures or cross wall system and the third one is the portal frame system which you need to remember aware about the precast building systems the various different types of the same uh, how you can uh, provide the various uh, building systems when you are doing a precast concrete structure work let us have an overview of the analysis of a frame or a portal frame of precast concrete right so first of all you would be wondering that how it is different how a precast concrete structure is analyzed as compared to a monolithic cast in situ structure i suppose you already know how to analyze a cast in situ concrete portal frame so the first response over here will be that a precast concrete structure is not a cast in situ structure cut up into little pieces making it possible to transport and erect right is the passage of forces through the prefabricated and assembled components in a precast structure and it is quite different to a continuous or a monolithic structure this is certainly true near to the connections only otherwise the overall frame analysis will be different hence it is possible to begin a global analysis by first considering the behavior of a continuous frame and identifying the positions where suitable connections in a precast frame can be made a two dimensional in the plane simplification is appropriate in the first instance as you can see in the figure over here where there are no structural frame components only simply supported floor units are provided connecting the 2d in plane frames together the approximate bending moments and deflected shape in a three story continuous beam and column frame subject to vertical patch loads and horizontal pressure will be considered in this type of analysis the beam column connections have equal strength and stiffness as the members the stability is achieved through the combined action of beams columns and beam column connection in bending shear and action this type of frame is called unbraced frame right see over here uh, which we talked about the unbraced frame there are points of zero moment right it means the point of contra flexion which will depend on the relative intensity of the two load cases if gravity loads are dominant beam contra flexion is near to the beam column connection if the horizontal load is dominant then the contra flexion is at mid span with the final location for the combined loading at about 0.15 times the span you have to understand that this frame analysis is an overall analysis a global analysis of the precast structure system now um, if the strength and stiffness of the connection at the end of the beam are reduced to zero as you can see in the picture while the column and the foundation are untouched the resulting moments and deflections in this frame which you can see as f2 the columns alone achieve the stability of f2 the beams transfer no moments only axial force and shear forces are experienced the foundations must be rigid moment resisting this is the principle of a 
pinned jointed unbraced skeletal frame if you are dealing with taller structures three stories or about 10 meter then the large size column becomes impractical and uneconomic leading to bracing so this is the main difference between braced skeletal system and unbraced skeletal system the bracing may be used in full height call a fully braced system or up to a certain level that is partially braced system the difference is shown to you in the picture below an example of a fully braced system and partially braced system so the frame analysis tells you the conclusion that two types of skeletal frames can be provided when you are talking about a precast frame structure the bracing could be located in the upper stories providing the columns in the unbraced part below the first floor are su sufficiently stable to carry horizontal forces and any second order movements resulting from slenderness meanwhile pinned connections or hinge connections may be formed at other locations as well friends um these are the two different types which you need to know um there is also further a lot of concepts involved in the precast frame analysis we will keep up to the braced and unbraced skeletal system limited up to that in now uh, let us talk about the various limit states that have to be uh, studied we know that we already follow the limit state method for designing the concrete elements according to our indian standard course we have two different types of uh, systems that is limit state method and working stress method uh, we have already been practicing since a very long time limit state of uh, practice let us try to understand what are the different types of limit states which are to be considered when you are talking about the precast concrete structure like i said it is uh, different from the cast in situ concrete structure so let us have a look at the various types of limit states which we need to understand which we need to follow uh, we have magnitude and combination of loads loading pattern for gravity and horizontal loading frames and beams we are supposed to analyze the various types of loads we already know that we have various load combinations according to the is code 875 part 1 to part 5 we have different types of loads and load combinations already defined for any type of uh, concrete construction uh, then according to euro code also we have euro code 0 that is the basis of design bs en 1990 2002 and if you want to go for indian standards code then it is 15917 revised in the year 2010 so the first which we have is serviceability limit state which we follow for the conventional concrete structures that is the stress cracking deflection dynamic fatigue these checks are provided second is instability limit state that is turning of the structures because there is maximum chance of overturning in case of a precast concrete structures the third is ultimate limit state that is for the strength and the buckling which you are already aware of you might have even practiced of the same then we have the accidental limit state that is for the fire robustness and progressive collapse now students understand the progressive collapse analysis is a very integral part of the precast concrete structure which you can go through various references uh, we need to avoid this progressive collapse and it is the pattern which takes place in case of any kind of accidental load on the precast structures so students uh, let us keep till here these are the four different types of limit states which we need to study and we will analyze them in the upcoming sessions okay students have a good day thank you